Hello everyone, my name is Ben Eady. I'm the online media manager of ModernAnalyst.com, the premier online community for business analysts. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar titled End Document Chaos, Save Time Through Collaborative Requirements Management. Today's featured speaker is Derwin Harris and with him he has Jonathan Kuypers. The webinar will last approximately 60 minutes including the Q&A session, so make sure you submit your questions in advance using the question feature on the webinar software. I'd also like to say thank you to JAMA Software for sponsoring this event, and at this time I'll turn it over to Derwin to get us started. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to present this to you all today. I, I hope you find it interesting. Uh, today is really titled End Document Chaos, and the idea behind this webinar is that we're seeing that a lot of time is being wasted on managing requirements utilizing the traditional methods of, of documentation. So what I really hope to show today is that there is a way in which you can save time by incorporating collaboration and technology with your requirements management. So without further ado, we'll just kind of dive right into it. So first and foremost, uh, my name is Derwin Harris, as, as you were just introduced to me. Uh, I am a solutions architect and a co-founder here at JAMA Software. And so we gain a lot of insights in working with our customers because we've built a product that helps uh, organizations ultimately gather and require and collaborate on their requirements. And so by working with these different customers, we've gained a lot of insights. Uh, prior to JAMA Software, I worked as an IBM business partner consulting for lots of organizations on a wide range of different projects. I have worked on projects that are both traditionally waterfall, I've worked with rational unified process, uh, and I've definitely worked in a lot of projects that were incredibly agile or were a hybrid of agile and waterfall. And so I've seen a lot of what works. I've also seen a lot of the frustrations that people have experienced in utilizing traditional means of documentation. Um, and I've seen a lot of things change over the past 10 years or 20 years to be honest, but really I think it's the last 10 years that we've seen a lot of changes occurring. And really what I want to highlight today is some insight into what we've seen and what we're seeing going forward in terms of how these changes are going to help us ultimately improve our process. So real quick, uh, who we are as a company, uh, JAMA Software currently has over 350 enterprise customers, uh, some of which are part of the Fortune 100. And so this obviously means that they're dealing with very complex projects. Uh, they typically are slow to uh, adapt to innovative technologies, so they're, they're typically using Word or Excel or uh, in some cases nothing. <laughs> and uh, as scary as it might sound, they're all really looking to incorporate some of the new technologies and the concepts that I'm going to be highlighting today. Uh, we, we work with a wide range of companies, from U.S. government to medical device to aerospace, pharmaceutical, and even traditional software companies. And so again, I think it's really this experience that we've gained from working with those customers to having seen what they've been dealing with and seeing them be successful by incorporating or utilizing more collaborative capabilities uh, is really what's driving this webinar and is I'm sort of excited to share with you today because I really feel that uh, there's a lot of things you can take advantage of going forward. So to start, let's just talk a bit about why we're here and the benefits that we're hoping to gain. As I go through this, this webinar, uh, I'll talk a little bit in a moment about what the technique that I'm employing and kind of the concepts behind it. I think the first thing that's really important is that time is at a premium. And this is really something that's evolved in the past 10 years. Obviously, with the economy, uh, we've seen that we're, we're having to do a lot more with less. Uh, there's less resources. And so I think it's somewhat of a misconception that organizations uh, aren't treating time with as much respect as it deserves. Uh, they're expecting people to do a lot more, uh, but they're not necessarily figuring out ways to help you be more efficient. And I think this is a critical part of what I'm highlighting today is that when we compare the difference between doing requirements management in a collaborative manner versus doing it in a more traditional Word document manner, I'm not here to say that one is, uh, that one process or one direction is going to create failure, I'm really here to say that it's going to save you time. Uh, and I think that's an important distinction because I don't want to say that one method is over better than another, but we're just here to improve the overall efficiency. The second thing is we're, we're really talking about quality as well. 
that at the end of the day, if we're if we're rushing more, or we're stressed out, or we're having difficulty tracking, or spending a lot of time managing information that could otherwise be managed automatically, or we're rehashing conversations that keep occurring, then ultimately we're seeing a degradation in quality because quality is something that's not just around testing. Uh, to make sure that the product works, but it's really around making sure that the information at the beginning is documented correctly and that people are all in agreement and in alignment with what we're trying to deliver. And you've heard this time and time again is that the sooner you capture and define this information in an accurate uh, and well-written way, uh, the more likely or the less likely you're going to have defects or problems down the road. So the, the, the ability to really make sure that everybody's on, on, uh, on the same page early on is a critical part of this process, and it's ultimately going to save you time. The third item is this concept of change. And again, we've heard a lot about this, uh, and, and we experience it every single day. Change is inevitable. No matter how hard you try and write the requirements, no matter how proud you are of the requirements that you've written, uh, it's going to change. Someone's going to come back and ask you to change those requirements or to rewrite them in a way that's more meaningful or uh, to write them in a way that's going in accordance with the technical limitations uh, or maybe some kind of reality around the budget or the scope. So there's a lot of things that can cause change and your ability to quickly react to that change and incorporate that change without having to uh, fear that you're missing some information or worst case scenario, as we'll see in the webinar today, is that sometimes people ignore the documents altogether and just simply act on the change. Uh, it's important that we keep this information captured. And the last thing that's really important, I think, and this is something that uh, has really evolved in the past 10 years is that technology itself is, is evolving to in such a state that we're starting to see true collaboration, true capabilities that are going to help you manage this information. I really believe that up until the last even five years, there hasn't been a real tool or solution out there that enables you to in, incorporate this collaborative concept. Some of the technologies that we're seeing in the social sphere, such as uh, Facebook and Yammer and all these things, have really been slow to work their way into the business environment. Um, but this ability to really truly collaborate socially is important to pull into the business world. There's obviously uh, huge differences between the social world and the business world. Uh, but there's a lot of similarities that we can take advantage of. And that's going to help us ultimately utilize this collaboration. So for today, the way I'm going to demonstrate this, or the way I want to go through this, is I'm going to take two different business analysts. Uh, so the goal here is that we're going to do kind of a day in the life. Obviously, it's going to span multiple days. What I want to really walk through is I want to walk through what the life looks like of a business analyst is taking advantage of not only collaboration, but technology to help them manage that collaboration, but also another business analyst that's heading down that traditional path. And so as part of that, there's several different stages that I'm going to be demonstrating today, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each of those different stages. And for all of you, I hope this seems familiar, but this is sort of the essence of your life as a business analyst. You are ultimately capturing information. You are then elaborating on that information, rewriting it, uh, applying your skills to it. You're then sharing it with other folks. You're collaborating on it. Uh, in some way or another, you're collaborating on it, whether it's simply having meetings or phone calls or via email. Uh, collaboration is a very broad term. Uh, I'm certainly going to narrow down onto what I feel was the appropriate kind of collaboration. Uh, and then there's obviously change. There's downstream information, which we'll talk about as well. And then there's the concept of all of this being iterative. So I don't want to lead you down the path of thinking that this is uh, purely a waterfall approach. Uh, what I really want to get across is that there is a way in which you can incorporate agile methodologies uh, into any of your processes you're utilizing. Because uh, and this is actually a whole separate conversation, uh, but it's important to recognize that Agile is really about being collaborative. 
So if you're looking to improve your process and incorporate agile methodologies, the fact of being collaborative, the fact of being iterative, you're already 90% there. So let's look at this side-by-side -side story and start working through the process of what these lives look like. The capture stage is the very beginning of a project or a process. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to start at the same level. I didn't want to assume that the business analyst on the left is starting with a technology or a solution of any kind. I wanted to assume that they're starting with the same uh, base set of requirements. These requirements may have come from anywhere. They could have come from a RFP. Uh, it could be that the business analyst is literally on site with the customer, capturing the requirements in a notepad or on the laptop. Uh, it could be that the requirements are actually old legacy documentation for an application that you're in the process of revamping or rewriting, and you just simply want to utilize that as a starting point to build the new set of requirements. So there's lots of places that requirements come from. And I think it's important to recognize that regardless of where they come from, you're ultimately in this phase of capturing information uh, or receiving, I guess you could even call it. The other thing I want to make note of is that down at the bottom, you'll see I've got this time counter. And we're going to assume that we're both starting at the same day. Uh, maybe they've just taken this job at this new company. Maybe they're in separate companies. They don't know each other. They're in separate companies. But you're ultimately at one day. Now, what you'll see as we go through this process, as I go through this webinar, that the days are going to increment. I want to make a call out early on that there's a lot of research that we've done. and We've worked with customers to really understand and uh, document or capture how effective or how efficient they're being. And we've heard from a lot of our customers and seen from a lot of customers that they've saved a lot of time. Uh, some of them have experienced uh, greater efficiencies, some less. So there's a wide range of, of differences and there's so many dependencies here. So the numbers that you'll see that I've documented here are kind of off the top of my head. They're just really here to represent the differences. So I don't want you to get hung up on the days as they increase. So let's take these documents and move on to the next phase. We're now in the elaborate phase. This is where the business analyst has taken that document and brought it back to their office. They're sitting in their cube or their open space or their home office and they're about to utilize what makes them a true business analyst. And they're going to take those documents and begin rewriting them or elaborating or expanding their requirements. This is really where a business analyst's role is incredibly critical. You are the domain experts. You are the person with the skills and the understanding, uh, hopefully the writing skills as well, to take those requirements and put them in a state or read them in such a way that's going to be understandable by both the customer or the stakeholders, but also the developers or the technicians or the engineers downstream. So this is a very important phase. But I think what's important to note is that the difference between the business analyst on the left and the business analyst on the right is that the one on the left decided, you know what, I'm going to get out of Word. I'm going to take these requirements and I'm going to pull them into a repository of some sort. Now, obviously, me being from JAMA Software, I'm a huge proponent of Contour, which is our application. And I'm going to be doing a quick little demo at the end of this webinar just to show you an example. But don't get caught up on that. I really believe that there's lots of solutions out there that can do this kind of capability. Uh, we're not alone. So what I'm here to say is that the, it's, it's up to you to decide what you ultimately use. But having it in a central repository and getting away from that concept of a document is what's going to free you from this, the boundaries of this chaos that we're trying to avoid. And that's ultimately the goal. And so this is sort of that critical step of, of that change that we're trying to uh, adapt to. So the business analyst left has imported this into some repositories, some applications, so that the requirements are no longer documents, but they are truly requirements. They are information. They're data. And so the one on the left can begin prioritizing, organizing, uh, editing individual requirements, uh, beginning adding attributes to it, such as a priority or the status of it. Uh, there's a lot of additional things that you can gain from pulling this into a more robust solution than, say, Word and or Excel. 
Meanwhile, the business analyst on the right has taken this document and is starting to rewrite new documents. Uh, maybe there's different templates, he's spending some extra time thinking about what the format should be, uh, there's not really any loss of time there, but you know, there's the thoughts that you go through. Uh, he's not really able to prioritize easily unless maybe he pulls them into an Excel doc and creates another column for priority. So maybe there's two documents, you're writing one that's the specification, writing another that's the Excel doc, who knows, but you end up with this uh, potentially multiple documents. Uh, one of the things he might do is, is as he's editing, he may save it every so often as a version one, a version two, just so that if he gets too far along and realizes that uh, he doesn't like the way it's reading, he can go back to a previous version. Uh, there's lots of techniques that we utilize to overcome the limitations of Word. Whereas on the left-hand side, we're assuming that everything is versioned, that it's all tracked. You know, these are all basic capabilities in any requirement software. So let's take a quick pause. We're early on in this webinar, but before we start, I just want to see, of everybody here, are you using Word or Excel today as your primary means of requirements doc documentation? I'm just sort of curious. So we're going to put this poll out there, and we're going to have you go through. And my expectation is that a majority of you are going to say yes. Uh, I will be surprised if a majority says no, uh, because obviously the title of this webinar is End Document Chaos, so I'm, I would assume a lot of you are in this sort of state where documents are driving you crazy. And you'll notice as we go through that, that on the left-hand side is sort of a graphic of what you might be experiencing in that you're turning track changes on, you're using email to send this around, there's lots of versions, and so the chaos is ultimately being ensued because of this process that we're all going through. So, what are the results? The results are 84% of you are saying yes, 16% of you say no. So that's interesting, uh, it's what I would expect. Uh, I'd be very curious of those 16%, those of you who have said no, to sort of see what you thought when you were coming in here. Uh, are you experiencing chaos in some other manner? Uh, but maybe we just save that as a later date. Uh, my email's out there, you can certainly email me, but I'd certainly be curious to know. Those of you who have said yes, I'm assuming that it's because you're experiencing exactly what we're talking about here, and this webinar is, is definitely targeted for those folks. So let's move down the line. We're, we're continuing down the process here of, of what's occurring in the day-to-day -day of those business analysts. And so the requirements have been elaborated on. You're at a point where you've, you've written them in a way that you feel is ready for uh, sharing or consumption by your stakeholders and or your customers. The difference here that I want to highlight that's not clear in this graphic, but what's important is that when you share that information is, uh, is really up to you. Now what you probably tend to do is that you probably tend to wait until that document is really well written, until you feel like it's utterly complete. There's a lot of pride involved, and so you tend to hold that requirements document as long as possible while you really think through it. And that, again, is time that's being wasted because you're probably spending more time than necessary ensuring that all of your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed, whereas you would gain from sharing that information sooner. So there's a time difference that starts to occur here because the person or the business analyst on the left is actually taking that set of requirements. And I'm going to differentiate here. When I talk about the person on the left, I'm strictly talking about requirements, whereas the person on the right, I'm talking about documents. So the person on the left has shared those requirements. He's uh, sent it via the interface so that each of the users or stakeholders or engineers have received an email with a link that takes them back into the environment. So we're constantly keeping people inside the same repository so they're always working off the most current information and the most accurate information. Whereas the person on the right has taken this document and put it into an email and sent it to these individuals. So what we've done by doing that is we've made copies of those documents and they now exist in each person's mailbox. Now that person has to wait. That business analyst is in a holding pattern while he waits for people to review, update, turn track changes on, ask questions, maybe those questions every email. And so this is really the beginning 
of the chaos that we've seen in those diagrams. This is the starting point. As soon as you let go of that Word doc, you have lost the control. You no longer have visibility, you don't know what people are thinking, uh, and you don't know when you're going to get it back. And this really starts that, that downward spiral of managing those requirements, which is why probably a lot of people hold off as long as possible before actually sending that document out, which inevitably delays uh, the time involved. So we're starting to see a separation of the time. The next phase is, is, very, is the natural next stage, which is the collaboration point of it. So you've shared your requirements with these folks, and you want them to start talking. And you want them to start uh, editing or making changes or proposing changes. Uh, again, you can decide whether or not you want people to make changes directly or you want them to propose changes uh, so that you can actually go in and update those. So if we compare the difference between the two, the business analyst on the left is, again, using a social collaborative environment to have conversations. And this is where we'll start to see the biggest difference in days. Because on the left-hand side, because everybody has visibility, because everybody's able to communicate and collaborate with each other, and because the business analyst on the left can see that conversation, you have that instant gratification. Everything is immediate. You're able to react, respond, make changes on the fly as it happens. Whereas the person on the right-hand side is still in that holding pattern, waiting for the documents to be returned. And when they are returned, the documents all have different changes. And this, again, is a, a pain point for a lot of folks, is that they're saying, I send this document out, and I end up with multiple documents, five or more, all with track changes turned on, all with comments. And I have to spend a lot of time merging that information, going through the laborious task of making sure that I've addressed every change that the person has requested. Uh, I have to resolve any conflicts that occur. And it's important to note that the business analyst sees those conflicts. The users themselves did not see those conflicts because they're working in silos. They've simply marked up a requirement, and they don't know that customer B has marked up that same requirement but with a different idea. Had they been able to communicate and talk to each other, they may have resolved that conflict themselves, and the business analyst can literally sit back and then make the change when it occurs. So this is where we begin to see the biggest separation is that by not having people working in a single environment, a shared environment, you're losing that control and you're adding a lot of stress and a lot of time to your day-to-day -day as you spend that time merging the information. This is also probably why people fear sending these documents out. Uh, I have, just as a side note, I have seen as well that the business analysts on the right have literally taken the document in their hands and walked it to each and every single individual one at a time, or they've sent it to one person and said, hey, when you're done, send it to customer B, and when customer B done, send it to customer C. You can imagine the time that that takes. I would say this 15 days would be triple if you went down a process like that. So the next logical thing is change. Change is something that's going to occur as part of this process. So on the left-hand side, because people have been having a conversation inside the solution, they've been proposing changes, the business analyst has been able to make the changes to the requirements as part of those conversations. And I think this is a fundamental difference in that the business analyst is able to work and operate on an individual requirement. Uh, and so as well, the users downstream or the users that are involved are working on individual requirements. So let's say you've got 50 or 100 requirements, and the users are working through it, and there's a conversation around requirement number five. Well, I'm able to have a conversation around that requirement and, and ultimately make a change to that requirement. Meanwhile, the users haven't finished the entire review. So this is really something that's happening in parallel, and it's saving us a huge amount of time because it's happening in parallel. There isn't these long delays, and so we don't experience those, uh, those emails where you're receiving a document that's a week ago or two weeks ago, and you're going, okay, what was this about? And we're losing that state. We're able to really interact and collaborate on this information, and this is where Agile Manifesto calls out the importance 
of individuals and interaction. And this is again where I'll say technology has evolved. When the manifesto came out back in 2001, there was no software that allowed us to interact as individuals. Uh, we always had to be in the same room, therefore you had these meeting rooms, but now with software you can begin to interact with individuals through a collaborative nature. Meanwhile, the person on the right, and this in my opinion is the, the most frustrating, I know if you probably hear me say that a lot, but let's say that the business analyst has in fact succeeded in merging that, the, all those documents, all those changes, and we're back to one document. There's still a ton of versions that have been saved out in some repository, but there's a document that the business now has in his hand that he thinks represents the most current document, and he's pretty satisfied with that. It took a lot of work, and he's feeling pretty good about himself. He's now going to send that document back to the user and say, thank you all for your feedback. Please re-review. Imagine the world of those downstream or those individuals. They've just received an email. It's probably a week later. It's no longer top of mind. And they have no visibility to all the other changes. And they've now been sent an entire document, again, with no highlights, no track changes, because it's impossible to do if everybody turned track changes on, and it would be a nightmare to try and read it with all the different colors in there. But they just simply have a new document. And maybe there's a table at the top that said, you know, revision control table that has in it revision five, uh, changes incorporated from all five stakeholders, changes were around X, Y, and Z. Well, that's helpful, but it's not really giving me any clear idea of what changed. So I now have to re-review, or I'm probably going to want to re-review the entire document. Well, this is not exciting to me, and it's probably somewhat painful. So the chances are that I'm going to half review it. I'm going to look through it, nod my head, and, and send it back. There's still a delay here, but what we're starting to see is we're starting to see uh, that quality go down because people are not engaged as much as they should be engaged and they're feeling a little frustrated and they're kind of tired and they just want to get done with it. They want to move on. Let's move on. Let's get to the point where we're building this product. Why do we have to spend so much time on this documentation? The left hand side, this is taking a lot less time and we're getting to the development side sooner. So this is a critical piece uh, and also is helping incorporate that agile concept. So the chaos continues to grow and this is where it becomes exponential. So one of the things that happens is, let's say that you've actually accomplished uh, the point where you've finished the requirements document. And I want to make another note here that you don't have to finish the entire document. The business analyst on the left has the ability to track or send portions of that document out uh, because I'm no longer tied to this concept of a document. I'm working on data. I'm working on information that just happens to be shared and available and visible to other folks. So again, this is where that iterative concept comes out. I can then, once I've finished a portion of those requirements, I can send it to the engineers. I'm again going to invite them. I don't want to export this out. I want to invite them into the environment so we continue with this concept of everybody working on the same information. The engineers are going to be able to come in, see the requirements, and they're going to be able to create their artifacts. Now, what they're creating can be stories, if you're more agile, use cases, if you're using use cases. Uh, they can be technical requirements or system requirements. Uh, really, I've seen a lot of this kinds of information. And this isn't even talking about business rules and other artifacts that might be incorporated or well. But what we're gaining from this is that we're gaining or what we need to track is traceability. So what we're asking the engineers to do on the left-hand side is create their requirements and link it to the requirement as it exists in the system. So they're not only able to enter their own information in, but they're connecting it to the information that the business analyst is working on. And so this is going to help uh, avoid any tragic misinformation uh, or lack of connection. And I think importantly, uh, they're also able to see the conversations around those requirements, which are, I'll talk more about later, but those conversations are really important in helping the engineers understand not only the requirement, but the reason behind why the requirement is the way it is. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, the business analyst has taken that 
those documents that he's created and sends it to the engineers. Again, we have multiple copies uh, and the engineers are going to begin creating their technical specifications. The risk here is that there is no connection and we're dealing yet again with that problem of the document, the versions of the document, who's sharing the, the creation of the documents and we've really just entered into an exponential level of chaos where this information is all around, there's conversations happening via email and nobody really has visibility or understanding. So there's a lot of trust in this process and there's a lot of uh, stress because there's a lot of unknowns that's occurring and we're kind of losing track of this thing. And the big risk is that as we move downstream, because there's no connection, because there isn't this sense of uh, connected state between the original requirements and these engineering requirements, we find ourselves no longer going back to the requirements. And this comes up later when we start talking about iteration, but this disconnect really plays a vital role as we move forward. And so this brings us to the, the iterative concept where uh, this process is happening over and over again and we want to really enable us to be more iterative. We want to enable information to flow upstream and downstream. We want to make sure that uh, if a change occurs, so let's just take an example. The customer comes to the business analyst and says, you know, I know I signed off on those requirements. Uh, I apologize. I was just reading or the government just passed a law and it's causing me to rethink this one requirement. You know, there's a lot of reasons change can occur, but when they come to the business analyst and say this needs to change, it's important that the business analyst is able to quickly see, well, what requirement are we talking about and what is the downstream impact of that change? What technical requirements are impacted by that? Who's impacted by that? And this is something that's virtually impossible to do unless the, uh, for the business analyst on the right uh, in a sane way. That same example can happen from the bottom up with developers uh, saying, you know, I'm running into a problem with the technical capabilities. I propose we do this a different way. You're able to look and see to what degree that impacts the requirement. You can get the customer to look at it and agree. And then we're all in collaboration. We're all in agreement, so nothing's getting lost. The person on the right is dealing with lots of documents and as I mentioned the risk of this is that we no longer have any connection. We maybe have a trace matrix that's been created separate from the documents. Someone is responsible for that Excel doc and so they're managing this traceability. There's lots of communication that's happening back and forth and so this is where we start to see a huge increase in the time because change becomes incredibly difficult to manage uh, effectively. So what we end up with is we actually end up just implementing the change ad hoc uh, and we start to lose sight of what the original requirement is. And one might think, well, that's actually going to save you time because you didn't have to go back and look at the requirements. But we've already lost a lot of time. And believe me, you end up losing time down the road because if you're doing that ad hoc, you may find that that's not the case and you find yourself doing a lot of rework. So that's certainly not uh, an excuse. So have we averted chaos. If we take a look at the stats around this, we can see that the business analyst one has spent approximately 26 hours uh, in this overall process. Again, these are just numbers. Uh, I'm not tying these to any extreme reality, but this is about what we've seen when we've worked with lots of different customers. Uh, business analyst two is, is seen about double, uh, we've seen even triple savings in terms of the process that people are going through. It is amazing the pain that people will go through to manage their documents and the chaos around those documents. And it's amazing to me, uh, actually the blind eye that people are turning to this risk. Uh, they're assuming that, hey, this is the way it's been done for decades. Why would we need to change? It's working because you're right. Chances are your projects are successful, that they're working, and maybe even the customer's happy. Uh, but the real question is, have you been able to do that in the most efficient way possible? It's always worth looking at what you're doing and finding those improvements and incorporating those improvements. Why continue to do something uh, in a stressful, difficult way when there's a better way? The other thing that's happened, hopefully, is that you've improved the quality of the requirements. Again, because you've had all this visibility, you've had these conversations, we've really been able to incorporate or increase the, the quality of not only the requirements but everything downstream. 
Meanwhile, the one on the right has potentially increased risk because we've lost that connection. We don't necessarily know if people are reviewing it well. We don't have that visibility. Conversations that happened in meetings aren't being captured. So, uh, it, you know, maybe a couple people are aware of what was decided, but that decision hasn't been shared with everybody else or it's been long forgotten. You know, these projects can be upwards of years, uh, multiple years long. And I think it's important on the third one that there's less impact on other folks. You know, you may love Word. You may feel that Word is just the easiest thing in the word in the world to write in, and you love it. It's you 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 understand how to do the styling and the tables and the formatting, and you can just sit there and type all day into it, and you're a great writer. But you have to consider the impact that you're having on the downstream folks when you start passing that document around and it starts uh, losing that context and they're making changes and they don't know whether the changes they recommended were incorporated. You're, you're basically creating a lot of frustration. And I've seen this and I've even heard this where people are grumbling about so-and-so because uh, they are insistent on using this particular Word doc, but they're frustrated because they as an engineer don't know what to do with it. Uh, and as as they work on creating their technical specifications, they're having to uh, constantly be aware of the fact that the requirements doc has changed and they just simply don't have that. So they're impacted and they're frustrated. I'm hearing it daily. Uh, you may not be hearing it, but I'm hearing it. Uh, the last thing, and I put the no documents in quotes, is because you always have the ability to export data, you should. Uh, but documents is such an odd term. It's like, why are we managing documents? We should be managing requirements. And why are we caught up in this idea that there needs to be a a specification for this and a specification for that and a specification for the other thing when what you really want is you want requirements and you want to make sure that the requirements are met and that the technical requirements are linked to the user requirements and you know, that's what we really should be talking about. We should be talking about information. The second is that connection, you know, that once you've got all this information, you're uh, connecting them together. So you've got this traceability uh, and that's something that's very difficult to do when you're managing everything inside of documents. Whereas uh, if you have everything inside of documents, there's a good chance you're losing information. Uh, you may not lose requirements, but you may not be actually implementing requirements. That's what I mean by loss of information and in that by working your way downstream and not having this connection, there's a chance that uh, conversations are lost and actual uh, information is lost. The last is this conver is a conversation. I think this is important because I know as a developer, that I've seen conversations taking place and I've seen requirements documents and while if I read the requirements documents I get it I can see what the requirement says uh, I may question it I may not understand why the requirement is stated the way it is but having that conversation to understand that there was a question raised by maybe the business analyst to the customer and the customer responded with a little more clarity and then the business analyst rewrote the requirement to adhere to that uh, in a way that their customer agreed with. Well, that conversation is going to give me a lot of insight and it's going to avoid any kind of duplicate effort or questions that are raised uh, in addition to it. And I think the last and, and one of the really big benefits is is there's increased stress or decreased stress for the person on the left. You're really trying to uh, improve your lives here. Uh, you're not only improving the product or the process, you're not, you're not just saving the company money, which you are. This is all really important stuff, but you're ultimately reducing the amount of stress that you're experiencing as a business analyst. Because your job is not necessarily to make sure that you're running around understanding the entire project inside of your head. Your job is to make sure the requirements are well defined and that the product is ultimately successful. Uh, and helping that communication. I've seen and read a lot uh, and I've experienced what it means to be a business analyst. And what it means to be a business analyst is this communication. You are the liaison between these different entities. And if you're constantly running around back and forth being told different things, you're running into a problem. But if that conversation is captured in an environment, you're able to control that in a meaningful manner and everyone else has that kind of visibility to it. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to take a brief demo here. Uh, and really all I want to highlight is I'm going to highlight one small section of the application of, of Contour. And I'm, again, uh, whatever you, I encourage you to look at other applications, other solutions out there. What the message I'm trying to get across is that, that you want to be more collaborative. But to be more collaborative is not just saying, okay, we're going to talk more, we're going to have more meetings, we're going to use email more. It's that you really want to 
find a way to incorporate uh, the technology that exists today to enable you to really truly be collaborative. So my goal here is to just take what you what I've shown so far in those last final steps and just walk you through a very simple scenario. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over to my environment and, and let's just make sure that I'm I'm logged in. And we're going to go into what I consider a review. So just to give you a quick summary of where we're at, this is a review of a set of requirements. I'm going to avoid the term documentation, uh, but we're going to go ahead and apply a version to it. Now one of the things that will happen is, is oftentimes with the review, as you've seen in my examples, there's the business analysts and then there's the stakeholders and customers. So the business analyst in this case is the moderator, but I've also invited myself as the improver because I don't want to switch around this view. I want to show you just the different perspectives in a very simple format. So I've invited myself as the customer, so I'm playing both roles at the same time. Now what you'll see here is that this is just like a reading view. I have the same information, so we're not losing that concept of, oh, thank God I can still read the requirements, which is still really critical. Um, but the important thing is that conversations can begin to occur. Uh, you can see that there's highlights. Uh, people are able to highlight areas or sections and provide their feedback. They can describe what their feedback is. Uh, but suffice it to say that these conversations are being tracked inside of the solution in a more collaborative manner. And there's filters that are provided so I can quickly get access to that information. This is again providing efficiency in your process and reducing stress because you're able to focus your attention on areas that demand your attention. And in this case we can see that there's a conversation that's occurring. One of the stakeholders that I invited proposed a change. Uh, Jackson has come in and indicated what he thinks would work uh, and she's indicated that works for her as two other reviewers have agreed with it as well. So what's happened here is that the users that I've invited are working together to come up with the proper requirement itself. And then what this enables me to do, and this is again that parallel activity where I as the business analyst or the moderator in this case, moderator in this case can quickly come in and add change and can accept this change. So nothing major is happening here other than the fact that I'm not waiting for these individuals to complete their review. I am able to interact with them, I'm able to communicate with them, and we're all able to do this on a very collaborative manner. Now the other important aspect to this is that as you make changes, again I'm making them in parallel, I want to be able to push these changes out to these individuals. And this is where I might look at say the stats page, and the stats page is just going to give me some insight into well, where is everybody at in this review. This again is that collaboration, I'm seeing everybody. I can see that everyone's 100% complete. Now, if this had been the traditional world and everybody had been complete, they would have emailed me the document and I would have started now the process of merging everything. But because I've been working in parallel, as the users have been working, I'm already done. And so there is no lag time. There's no waiting for the me to publish or make all of my changes. I've already made the change. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and publish an updated revision so that everybody's going to be looking at the most current. So what Contra is doing right now is it's literally bundling up all those changes and sending them out to the users. So they'll receive a notification and I'm going to switch over to the approver view and now I'm looking at a review that's in its version 2. Contour has remembered that I was 91% and it's even highlighting which items have changed since the previous review. So this is that reduction in stress, that impact that you're having on your users when you send them a, a revised document and say, thank you for your input, I've incorporated a bunch of other input and here's the entire document to re-review and they're having to go through it. It's a, it's a lackluster and an unexciting uh, task to do, whereas now they're really able to come in just focus on what's changed, look at the comparison so they can truly see the detail of what's changed. Right? So I can see the highlight that the change has occurred, I can see the conversation, and based on this, I as the user can make an intelligent decision and finish the review. And so now the business analyst is aware of the fact that I've finished my review, it's happened in a much more efficient manner, and we've completed this process. Uh, and everybody, hopefully, at the end of the day, is happy, and we've avoided documents altogether. 
So with that, let's just do a quick summary. So, so far today we've talked about technology, and I'm encouraging you to use technology. Whatever it is, whatever you look at, I want you to look at technology from the perspective of collaboration and from the perspective of not documents, but from the perspective of requirements and information. We have the technology today. It's been around for years, but it's finally starting to evolve uh, in line with the social elements that we're learning from. Uh, and that brings me to the second point, which is be more collaborative. Utilize is that technology. Utilize those capabilities to share and work on information in a much more collaborative and social manner. It's not just about having more meetings. This is about finding a way to capture that information in something that people enjoy using, and that's also critical. Uh, truly connect information. Don't do Excel sheets. Uh, that is a nightmare. It's always one person's job. It's never accurate. Uh, it's always behind. It's out of date. Uh, it doesn't necessarily provide you any valuable information because it's not telling you who's on it, what status it is. Uh, it's simply just a trace matrix so that you ensure you've got coverage. But traceability goes much beyond that. It's really about knowing what's impacted, who's impacted, uh, what status the downstream information is, are the tests passing or failing. All of that information is critical. And I encourage you to redefine document. Uh, let's get that term uh, out of our vocabulary. Now, with that said, we're never going to get it out of our vocabulary. Everybody wants a document of some sort. Uh, we can even treat documents as a grouping of requirements. That's fine. Um, but just keep it in the back of your mind that what we're really working on is data and information. And evangelize social. I think, and the reason I put this in here is because uh, you've probably got an uphill battle. Probably your organization is struggling with the change. There's individuals within the organization that simply don't want to utilize a social or a solution that's not word. And I think the reality is, is that there's an impact that's occurring all the way downstream throughout the whole organization. Uh, we see a lot of organizations where the, the engineering team, the product managers, the project managers, and some of the business analysts are really excited and super enthusiastic about finding a new way of doing things, but there's always a couple individuals that are just steadfast in, I can't leave the Word document, it's really going to be hard. Uh, but we've seen time and time again real world examples where people have succeeded by letting go of that. And I think that's important. So with that, I like to just end this, well, we'll head into the Q&A after this, but it's important. One of our mottos at JAMA Software is to leverage your collective genius. And this is something that's proven to be very effective is that you have within your organization a lot of smart people. And you want to leverage that intelligence. And if you're miss or abusing that intelligence by making them wait or by making them re-review things or not documenting the conversations, uh, you're, you're wasting that intelligence and you're frustrating folks and people aren't going to be encouraged to uh, utilize what they have. And you kind of get this, this apathetic sense within the organization. You really want to leverage that genius and leverage that excitement around engaging people in an exciting manner. And that's really what I'm ultimately saying that collaboration should be. It should be fun. It shouldn't be overwhelming. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the Q&A and see what kind of questions you guys have. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Jonathan. I'm just going to help uh, facilitate the Q&A here. Uh, we've been monitoring the questions as they've uh, come in throughout the presentation. Um, and I just wanted to remind you all that if you still have questions, to use the, the question box within uh, the GoToWebinar application. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, Someone earlier on in the in the presentation, Derwin asked um, if you consider SharePoint a repository once a document is written. SharePoint is definitely a repository. It's a repository for documents. So I don't want to uh, discount SharePoint for what it is, but it is it is a repository for documents. And I know it has check in, check out. Uh, you can comment on things. It keeps track of the versions for you. So it helps manage the chaos a little bit. Uh, but you do end up with a lot of versions of documents. And it's still just simply not possible in SharePoint to link the requirement to the downstream artifacts. If you're linking a requirement to a specific technical specification or a requirement within a technical specification, and it's certainly not designed to be collaborative around the requirements themselves. You cannot have a conversation on an individual requirement. You can have a conversation on a document, uh, which I, I really, sort of my point is that kind of defeats the purpose and it just becomes difficult to understand exactly what the change is. 
Great. I've seen a, a couple questions come in um, around integrations. I've seen uh, Jive, Jira, uh, Greenhopper. Um, could you uh, talk about some of the integrations that Contour offers? Yeah, and, and I, again, it's not even necessarily contour. I think integrations are important uh, simply because you have, uh, again, integrations assume that there's some kind of technology that you're using today. And the development team, to be honest, is way ahead of the business analyst group. <laughs> and, and in fact, they're way ahead of the product management group. You know, they have had JIRA, uh, Rally, version one. They've had these solutions out there that are designed for developers, in and around developers, Greenhopper for agile development. Uh, all of these things are very specific to development tasks. But what we're talking about here is there's more, there's typically more documentation around uh, getting to that point, the creation of the requirements, use cases, stories, epics, whatever you're, you're creating happens upstream. And so integrations become critical, uh, having the ability to integrate those requirements with the system. And so that's something that we've believed in at, at JAMA in building contours that we've integrated with uh, HP Quality Center, with JIRA, and of course that assumes Greenhopper because Greenhopper is simply a plug-in to, to JIRA, um, but also Rally as, a, as an agile tool. So we have those integrations out of the box. We believe in that. Great, thanks. Um, question here, um, what if stakeholders are spread out at different locations and don't have the same access to a common location where you want your requirements document to be reviewed? What would be the best approach? Well, if they're, if they're distributed everywhere, that's a perfect example where you need a solution that they can all gain access to. Uh, that's, that's the approach. Uh, we have lots of organizations that have stakeholders. We have organizations that are simply spread out all over the, all over the world. And everybody has to be able to work on that central repository. I mean, uh, even kind of going back to a document repository, that document has to live somewhere. And you certainly don't want to be sending that around. You're losing control of that. So my, my recommendation is find a way to give them access. Uh, we're, we're in a day and age now where the cloud is becoming ubiquitous. It's becoming popular. Organizations within their IT department is able to expose applications through VPN to other solutions. Uh, being on an airplane is, is really no longer an excuse. Uh, you, you can gain internet access on an airplane. Uh, that's the one excuse I've heard for, for offline or I need to document a physical document on an airplane. Uh, but it's just becoming less and less important. Uh, the internet's just simply available everywhere and it, it's, the, the benefits outweigh any of the drawbacks. Great. Um, I think this question is referring specifically to Contour, but um, if someone wants a printed copy of uh, the, the review or the review uh, requirements document at any point, um, are you able to print that out and have a hard copy? You are, and, and I think that's a good thing to mention is that uh, what I'm really encouraging is the collaboration and working of the requirements in the structure or in the process of your project. Uh, that is, everyone's working off that same information. But there are times, for sure, where you need to export a document uh, or export uh, uh, an Excel doc. Uh, in fact, you know, we work with medical device companies who need to export documents for the FDA or uh, that maybe there are instances where you need to export it to a PDF. There's just simply, sometimes that's just the way it works. You have a customer that refuses to receive that via electronic, and so there are those instances where you have to export it. So the solution should be able to do that. I agree with that as well. Great. Um, how do you see the visual aspects of requirements, um, with the wireframes, prototyping, for example? Um, can this be tracked via Contour or any other tool for that matter? Well, that, that's a great question, actually. I know a lot of uh, requirements documents use models and diagramming and, and business process modeling, and that's certainly something that uh, you should be able to continue using. There's a huge amount of benefit to the visuals, but again, the visuals uh, become even better when you're able to collaborate around those visuals. And so whether or not you use the modeling that's available in Contour, or whether you're using uh, Visio or Enterprise Architect or Graffle uh, or Balsamic for mock-ups or Photoshop, there's, there's lots of solutions out there that do um, 
modeling and visual diagrams and as long as those can be brought into the solution where you know like contour you can import the, the images of those diagrams and then collaborate around those uh, that's certainly something that's uh, uh, important is the overall process great um, I have an attendee here um, who says uh, she works in a very document centric um, environment that and that's strongly supported by her managers and she's just wondering how should she convey the benefit of moving away from the paper um, Word or Excel documentation world? <laughs> yes, welcome to the world. That, that's, that is reality for a lot of folks, I'm afraid, and that's probably why we're, we're all here. Uh, you know, it's going to depend on the kind of things that are important to them. Is, you know, what I see a lot of times, and this isn't necessarily right, is that a lot of people uh, don't see requirements management solutions as a viable cost saving alternative because they feel well we're getting word and excel for free why would we spend money on a on a requirements management solution but when you really if you're able to break down the the frustration the risk and the time being spent uh, that's where you're going to begin to be able to present or provide the value and and even the cost savings because what you're ultimately doing is if you if you add up the hours that you're spending running around uh, rewriting the document uh, or tracking down where the changes are or simply not incorporating the changes at all, you can probably come up with a number. And that number uh, over a year's time span is, is most likely going to add up to a resource. Uh, and that's the kind of information a lot of managers and VPs like to hear is, are we saving on a resource or because uh, they don't want to necessarily feel like they have to hire someone new, but are we actually saving that kind of money? That's one approach. Uh, I could go on probably quite a bit, and, and that might be something to take offline, but we work with customers all the time who are looking for ways of showing the return on investment, uh, showing the advantages uh, of, of solutions like that to sort of encourage or get those managers buy-in. Uh, but I, I agree, it can, be, it can be an uphill battle depending on the person, how steadfast they are, uh, or how adamant they are about not moving forward. Great. Um, I've seen several questions come in around testing. Um, can you talk a little bit about the testing and QA functionality with, within Contour? Yeah, and again, I think testing is, uh, I, I highlight, I sort of skimmed over it when I was going through the downstream concept. You know, downstream can go multiple levels. You know, in my example, I did downstream to the, just the engineers, but it obviously continues from there down to uh, the QA team who's going to be uh, creating the test cases. Uh, I, I, here again, I really believe that the test cases or the validation or the verification, uh, whatever it is that you're linking to your use cases or your requirements, should be in the system. Now, whether it's in the system via collaboration with HP or integration with HP Quality Center uh, or a link to an external information, however that works, it's important that it's in the same place. And so certainly, you know, Contour, again, this has been one of those things a lot of people have asked for is, can we do testing because that's like the critical the critical traceability and the answer is of course yes great um, how do you manage um, baselines and, and version control uh, that's a great question so uh, this that always leads down the path of documentation right again it's that term documentation but you know what is it when you think of a baseline what is it really it's a snapshot in time based on the version of the requirements at that point in time. So let's say we're working on 50 requirements and they're all moving forward at different paces. I've edited requirement one three times, I've edited requirement four 10 times. That means that they're at different stages uh, of their evolution. What the baseline does is it takes a snapshot that represents the current version of all of the requirements so that you have that snapshot, so that you can go back at a later date and do a comparison between the different baselines. Again, a baseline is a snapshot based on a milestone, a signature, a sign-off. So if you're doing a review, like I did in my example, once you get that signature or that completion from the different individuals, you should create a baseline. That way, you have that record of that information. And Contour actually does that automatically, uh, but baselines are, are, are that. I wouldn't call a baseline a document, but a lot of times that's what people do is they say, this document is the baseline, we've got a signature and we're going to store it somewhere. 
Um, Contour does the same thing, but it's just a group of requirements. Or other artifacts, textual items, uh, signatures, test cases, you know, all that can be included in a baseline. Great. Thanks, Derwin. I think uh, that brings us to the end of our time here, a kind of perfect timing, actually. Um, but uh, there still have been um, several questions here, and a lot of these are um, great. Um, we're happy to respond offline. Um, I've tried to ask the questions that are most applicable to, to everyone here, but I uh, appreciate um, everyone and everyone's questions. So hopefully we can um, touch base offline. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you to Derwin and Jonathan for a very informative presentation. Thank you to everyone for attending today's Modern Analyst webinar. I wanted to point out that the webinar, along with the slides, will be archived at modernanalyst.com within a few days. And this concludes today's event, so we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.